Do you ever feel like taking a hammer to your motorcycle? <laughs> well, join the club. Because that's kind of what we're doing today. Hey guys, Octane Restorations, and we are back with the 1988 GL1500. Uh, it's part 12 in this series. <laughs> this series is going to be pretty long. This motorcycle needs a lot of work. Last episode, our starter was seized. So we are trying to hit it with an extension from like a, I believe that was a half inch drive or it might've been a three eighths inch drive. Just a lot of extensions with a rubber mallet and just try to see if it was in a bind and we could knock it loose. Sometimes tapping on the outside or lightly tapping it, you can get it to free up, but we cannot. Uh, so we are going to have to remove it. This is a pretty straightforward process. Remove the battery, the battery box, all the electrical connections and everything you see near my right hand. And then starters held on by three bolts. You remove the cables that go to the starter, the positive and the negative. And then whenever you remove those three bolts, theoretically, <laughs> the starter should come out. But the fun thing is those bolts are not easy to access. So I was using all kinds of wobble extensions, wobble sockets, the whole nine yards. And you, <laughs> you're going to have to play with it and figure it out. I'll show you kind of what I used. This little plastic piece with that spade fuse, it did end up breaking on me, but I epoxied it back together and just put the fuse right back, and I didn't have any other problems. So I will show that later, me just throwing some epoxy on that plastic piece. But let's get to it. I'll shut up, and I'll let you look at it a little bit. Go ahead and record yourself or take pictures of you doing this because there's a lot of cables, a lot of electrical connections, and you do want to ensure that you get everything put in the proper place. So just video yourself or take a lot of pictures on the way and that'll really help you when it comes to the reassembly. My plastic piece that holds that 55 amp fuse, the blade fuse, it was already cracked, it was already kind of broken, and it just <laughs> decided to give out whenever I was going ahead and taking all this stuff off. As you can see in here in a little bit, that metal's going to bend a little. So I am going to have to take that off and I'm going to repair that with epoxy. You can kind of see it broken right there. So you might have to do this. These are pretty, pretty weak. Pretty straightforward process right here just applying a good amount of epoxy to it and then I'm clamping it together so that way it stays in place also keeping the fuse in there so I know it's the proper fitment now I'm kind of showing you where those bolts are there's two extra back there you know we removed the one with the wrench earlier but there's one kind of in the top left and then there's one in the very bottom and like I said, it's a pain in the butt to get to, I'm not going to lie. Hope you have a lot of extensions, some wobble sockets, and small hands. <laughs> I wear a size XL gloves, so this part was not easy for me. But it is what it is. Can't do anything about it. Just got to get it done, you know. So I want to say it was maybe like a 12, 12 millimeter socket. But I'd be lying to you if I said for sure.
There's a little bracket held on by Phillips that if you remove it gives you a little bit more space and that was vital for me being able to get the right angle right here. If you have a wobble socket you might be able to do it without removing that little Phillips bracket. It just holds wires in place but I had to remove it. And there was the bolt. Now for the real hard part, <laughs> getting that starter off. So remember, the starter has gears, so you don't want to twist it as you're pulling it out. You don't want to bind it up, so you got to kind of pry it straight back. It's not an easy process. I can kind of feel it loosened up right there. One of the things I did is I engaged the reverse lever, and I rolled the wheel back and forth to kind of loosen it up. I don't know if it actually did anything, but it did seem to help me here. And I'm not kidding you whenever I tell you this process took about two hours, two and a half hours from start to finish. It was pretty long, pretty difficult, and this is a lot of film condensed down. <laughs> but again, just trying to make more room there. I believe it's the positive cable that comes from the starter solenoid is connected back under there so it's kind of a pain to get to so I was going ahead and loosening that. This again is an 88 so it has the second starter solenoid and I wanted to be absolutely sure before I pulled off the starter <laughs> that it was not a starter solenoid. So we followed the procedure store manual and this solenoid is good. Dang it. I was really hoping it was going to be the solenoid and I wouldn't have to pull the starter. But anyways, no such luck. So it's time to go ahead and finish pulling out that starter. I'm also being really careful here. I'm probably not applying as much pressure as I should using the screwdriver as a pry bar, but I also don't want to bend any metal or break anything. So I am being pretty conservative with the amount of force I'm using to apply, but I do end up getting a pry bar here in a little bit. As you see, we kind of get it a little loose right there, create a little bit of a gap. There's that hole in the frame right there, and we're going to go ahead and use a socket, and we're going to take off the cable on the starter. I believe this one's the positive, but I could be wrong. It's been a little bit since I did this, <laughs> but we're going to can you keep prying, keep tapping it. Again, I don't want to force anything too hard because I don't want to mess it up any worse. So I would much rather take my time, be gentle with it, and ensure I get it out properly and safely. And here's the money shot. 
right there. See it broke loose. Now, fun part is finagling that starter through the back right there. <laughs> Again, nothing about this is easy. No one ever said it was going to be easy. Nothing about it's easy. But that's okay. We're not about easy. I don't know why I do this to myself. I would recommend this. <laughs> the thing is, no shops will work on these anymore. Just because the amount of things that can go wrong. And since they're older bikes, most of them have problems. Uh, so a lot of this you end up doing yourselves and then there's a problem with the gas tank it hitting the gas tank you know this starter is it's a fairly decent sized starter especially for a motorcycle so trying to get out of that little tight crevice there's just a lot going on right there but slowly work it back and forth pray a little bit cuss a little bit spit on it a little bit and you might just get the dang thing out of there As you can see, we're getting there. Nearly got it out. Oh, this moment we've all been waiting for. Oh, there it is. It is out. This thing's causing us all the problems. And as you can see, it is seized. I can't twist it. Normally these, you can at least twist them a little bit. <sighs> and don't worry guys, it's only downhill from here. <laughs> we still got the hydraulic lifters. You're going to figure out soon that this motorcycle is not getting any compression whatsoever. Uh, some problems with the back end that we got to sort out. And after we put it back together and everything getting ready for a test ride, we get a fuel leak that I found today. So <laughs> stay tuned. I hate to say it, but there will be more episodes of this thing until we get it running. But again, this is Octane Restorations. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment, like the video if you like it, and consider subscribing. Thank you. You have a good one.